Um, this is the Q2 Drupal Association uh, supporter webcast. I'm Carrie Lucina. I'm the Director of Revenue at the Association, and I'm joined by Heather Rocker, our new exec Executive Director. Welcome, Heather. Um, and Tim Lennon, who you all know quite well, our CTO. Um, and apologize if you see cats in the background or hear babies <laughs> crying. We are a distributed organization and work for our home, from our homes. Um, but we just wanted to um, tell you how you can stay informed. We do send a monthly email update just to keep you up to date and the latest news uh, from the association and um, updates from all the amazing work that our engineering team is doing to support the project. You can follow us on Twitter at Drupal Association, um, and you can contact your account manager, Delana Lang. Um, if you were working with Mark Brandsitter, you probably know that he's moved on from the organization, so I am your interim account manager until we get that role replaced. Um, our agenda for today is to talk about some Drupal Association news, things that are happening at DrupalCon and other Drupal events that we want you to be aware of, as well as um, highlights from uh, the work that Tim's team is doing on Drupal.org. We'd like to obviously thank our, all of our supporting partners, including our signature, premium, and classic supporters. Thank you again. Without the support of um, our, our Drupal Association supporters, we couldn't do all of this work that we're going to be talking about today. We also want to welcome new supporters to the mix. Um, including Nexus and, and GitLab and more. Thank you again. Um, it's exciting to see you know, some new faces in the mix as well. Um, and I'm going to kick it over to Heather Rocker for some Drupal Association updates. Thank you, Carrie. And thank you, everybody who's online with us today. I'm excited to do my first supporter webinar. So thank you again for the warm welcome to the community and, and know that you all have a direct line to me as you have ideas and suggestions. Um, one thing that I wanted to go over today, this is something we've been talking about internally at the Drupal Association and really things that are on my mind that I wanna make sure that our community knows. So a lot of what we're focused on is we wanna make sure that we can communicate and collaborate beyond our typical Drupal channels. We affectionately call this the Drupal bubble. And what we mean by that is there's a large need for us to grow both adoption and community members so that we can accelerate the project. And one of the best ways to do that is to reach out to people we don't normally get in front of. So if you have any ideas of uh, conferences we can join uh, to be at from a thought leadership perspective, or if there are organizations we should be collaborating with that we don't today, we'd love to hear from you about those. We're also going to be taking uh, the baton from Dries and his diverse, diversity and inclusion uh, keynote that he gave in Seattle. And so we take that very seriously. And one thing we'll be doing as an association is putting together a written strategic plan to support all of those goals. So you'll be seeing things come out over the next uh, few months, and we'll be looking for community input on those as well. Uh, something that's very applicable to the folks that are with us today is we're going to be having an increased focus on relationship building with our supporting partners and key stakeholders. We want to make sure that we understand uh, what we can do for you to be great partners, what's going to help drive your business, and, and not only the community but the project as a whole. So we want to work with you to get creative in what those solutions look like. And you're going to see some exciting things coming out soon, um, especially thanks to Carrie and her team who've been getting very creative in what we can do to be uh, great partners with everybody involved. We also want to be able to really recognize and reward contributions. When we talk about contributions, we typically think of code, but we're also really thinking about time and talent and treasure. So, you know, the time that you put into the community, it's not just the code contribution, which is huge, but those of you running camps, driving events, pulling people in uh, that are new members of the community, uh, giving us your thought leadership in a variety of ways, we want to make sure that we capture and recognize those things because they really drive what we're trying to do. 
I've also heard from many of you about the need to make sure we have really great systems that develop and scale our local associations and camps. So what we'll be doing is working with all of you that already know how to do this really, really well. And we'll be putting together best practices and trainings that we can roll out to the entire community. And the goal here is to make sure that nobody has to reinvent the wheel, that we're making the best use of all the resources collectively, and that we continue to scale what we're trying to do as a Drupal community. And lastly, wanted to give you a heads up that we are looking at enhancing our membership model and our benefits, both individuals and organizations. Uh, it rolls right into what we talked about from a relationship building standpoint, but we're always looking at how we can be the best association for you, the community, and what things are really going to be helpful uh, for the business community in particular. So keep an eye out for those exciting developments. An exciting development for us, and I think it will be for you too as I talk about it, is our newest leadership team member. And her name is Carol Bernard, and she's our new uh, leader for marketing communications and outreach. And Carol comes to us with a great background in marketing and communications, a lot of great nonprofit experience, but has picked up so quickly on Drupal and our community and technology in general. And she's bringing some great perspective to us from the outside in. And um, on the next slide, I'll show you what Carol and I and the team are really looking at. And these are things that Carol's going to help us drive that I think are important to you as well. And that is really looking at a strategic communications and marketing plan, not just for the DA itself, but how do we help from a marketing perspective for our entire community? Everything that we do is gonna have the lens of how are we driving support and adoption to support the project. We're gonna help you by learning to tell the Drupal story even better than we do today. And to think about how we tell it to different audiences that matter so that we bring more people into the fold every time. But also with the lens on diversity and inclusion, make sure that we're highlighting our diverse and global community. We're gonna be looking at expanding our community engagement. So I mentioned this briefly before as a personal mission, but reaching into other parts of the community that we don't touch today and really seeing how we can engage them in the Drupal project. Um, even things that you'll start to see at DrupalCon where we're going to engage the local communities. Um, we're looking at STEM education uh, nonprofits. We're looking at local colleges and university and how we can get you know, that next generation of Drupalers into the fold. And Carol is going to be a whiz at this, so get very excited about increasing our digital presence and earned media. So she brings a lot of experience to the table where we can take what we do well and do it even better. And we ultimately want to become thought leaders to the point that media is calling us about all things technology and open source, and this is a way to get there. Promoting Drupal, wanted to give a quick update on this. So I want to make sure that everybody knows that we do have the Drupal brand book uh, and the Drupal video. The Drupal video is a great intro to Drupal. As a business, it's a great way to show clients or potential clients what Drupal can do for you. Uh, and in addition to that, I think you'll find valuable the Drupal pitch deck. If you haven't seen it already, you can find all of those things uh, at the link that Tim has graciously posted here for you. Uh, and if you'd like to contribute to our case study section, here's the link for you to do that as well. We really want to be able to showcase the outstanding Drupal case studies uh, in our community. So if you have one that you think fits the bill, please submit. Board elections, uh, hopefully, as you all know, we are in the midst of electing our community board member. The elections do end this Friday, so make sure that you go to the link here and submit your vote. You can also read about the candidates. They've got a little um, information about themselves. You get a chance to do Q&A. And if you have any questions about uh, the process or the election it itself, you can reach out to Rachel, who's a, a huge uh, advocate for the community and can walk you through anything you need to know about the elections. In Drupal event news, I will let Carrie uh, take this piece because she's got some exciting things that you'll be interested in um, from engaging in our upcoming events. Sorry, I had to unmute myself. Um, yes, we do have a lot of exciting Drupal news and uh, events coming up, including the flagship European Drupal event that's happening this October in Amsterdam. 
Thanks to the support of our partners, Kwoni Congress, as well as the amazing community volunteers that make DrupalCon Europe happen. Um, a few things to note about DrupalCon Europe. Regular um, ticket pricing ends on September 25th, so there's still time to get tickets before a late pricing kicks in. If you are interested in exhibiting or if you need multiple tickets for staff or clients, Sponsorships are still available. You have until the end of September to sign up. We are partnering with Kwoni Congress to manage sponsorships, but please contact the Drupal Association if you're interested in learning more and we can help guide you through that process. And of course, we also have DrupalCon North America happening in Minneapolis, Minnesota next year, May 18th through the 22nd. A few important dates that we want to make you aware of, ticket registration and call for papers will open in early September. We'll follow up when we have the, the final dates um, set up. You'll have until November 22nd to take advantage of early bird supporter ticket pricing and sessions will be, will be announced on December 2nd. Um, and if you are interested in becoming more involved with programming, not just as a sponsor and a supporter, we wanted to point out that you can volunteer to become a chair um, or work on a session or a speaker team. If you follow that link that we have included in the deck and we'll send out as well as a follow up. This includes um, volunteering to support the builder and the content digital marketing tracks, as well as the summits that happen on Monday and Tuesday. <clears throat> a few new things to note for 2020. On the next slide, um, or that we are providing curated programming in the exhibit hall on Tuesday. We'll be hosting lightning talks and interactive roundtables, boffs, and a whole lot more just to help enhance the experience for both attendees and sponsors on that Tuesday. We are adding an exhibit hall reception on Wednesday night, in addition to the big opening reception that we do on Tuesday, um, just to provide more fun and networking opportunities for all. We're also continuing to create content and onboarding opportunities for all Drupal personas, which we have categorized as builders, content digital marketers, agency leaders, and decision makers. A few things to note and just tweaks about programming for um, 2020 that you'll see on the next slide. Um, agency, the agency leader track uh, will move back to just a one day summit that's gonna be happening on Monday at DrupalCon. Um, and then the content digital marketing track is back. We're continuing to create that content for marketing professionals who are responsible for content gen and demand generation, product marketing and user journeys. Uh, one thing to note is that we're moving to one ticket for the builder and content and digital marketing tracks since there is so much overlap between those audiences. So you'll purchase one DrupalCon ticket to attend the builder or the content digital marketing sessions on Wednesday through Thursday, and then you'll need to secure additional summit or training tickets for the special programming on Monday and Tuesday. We are also continuing to expand um, our Drupal Executive Summit series. We've been hosting summits and roundtables that are designed for CTOs, CIOs, CMOs, and other tech leaders at organizations that either already use Drupal or those that are evaluating Drupal. <clears throat> uh, you can see some of the, the previous events that we've um, put, hosted already, including standalone executive summits, uh, summits that are part of DrupalCon, um, as well as roundtables that, that we partner and put on with um, Drupal regional events like Drupal GovCon. Um, there are a few um, entries um, paths for entry, I should say, which vary, on, vary based on the size and the scale of the event, uh, ranging from being a supporting partner to an executive summit sponsor. Um, Minneapolis, the, the Minneapolis Executive Summit is scheduled for May 19th at DrupalCon, but uh, please do stay tuned for more announcements around additional standalone summits and round tables happening soon. Um, and with that, I'll hand it over to Tim Lennon. Thanks, Gary. Um, on the subject of the different places that we kind of co-locate events and have begun attending and expanding our presence at other uh, other events, um, we've been on the road quite a bit recently. So the, um, you may, if you've participated in some of these, seen some folks from the DA at these different places. So recently we um, were present at OSCON with a Drupal uh, booth and a Drupal Association booth and met with uh, other open source projects in their uh, open source alley in the uh, OSCON exhibitor hall. 
Um, we also sent a staff member uh, to the PDX Partners in Diversity Summit, uh, which was sort of a networking uh, event to learn about ways to increase diversity in communities hosted here in Portland, where many of us are located. Um, finally, uh, we attended Drupal GovCon and Midwest Drupal Summit um, to uh, both opportunities to network with the community and different audiences. Um, so we've go been going coast to coast, back and forth for the last several weeks and trying to get, that, get out there and, and be present. So if there are key events where you think important conversations could happen to help advance the project, feel free to reach out to us and perhaps send us an invite and we can continue to expand our presence in these other places. Um, with that, I'd like to roll into some updates from the engineering team on Drupal.org um, and uh, some related services that we maintain. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff that's been going on and uh, your support, uh, the funds you provide us as a supporting partner have made all this work possible. So thank you very much on behalf of my team. And this is that team, the top row being the uh, members of the Drupal Association staff and the bottom two being um, uh, contract and volunteer contributors who work with us very closely on a regular basis. Um, one thing that we're doing is trying to find ways to increase outreach to existing Drupal customers. So we are actually participating in a core initiative called the messaging channel in core initiative. So the idea here is that we can actually create a channel in the admin interface of Drupal uh, it, to which we can post messages um, about uh, important news for the project, important Drupal association news and events, things of that sort. Um, so uh, I wanna say thank you to uh, Lullabot and Zixware, two organizations that are partnering to help us move this forward. So it's our hope that we can uh, build out um, this, uh, this new feature and get it included in core and perhaps even backported to older versions so that we can reach out to the broad base of users uh, who have Drupal sites but might not be engaged in our other channels like on Drupal.org or our newsletters and things like that. It should expand our reach quite a bit. Um, uh, as mentioned earlier, we also did a recent revamp of the case study uh, format on Drupal.org. Um, and this is something you can talk to your account managers about submitting new case studies and being a part of the featured showcase if you'd like to do that. But we have a new featured showcase area um, that just sort of reformats how we present the case studies and has an improved set of filters uh, for filtering by version and industry. Um, and there's some uh, additional enhancements that we might make here as we get more uh, information about what we'd like to um, how we'd like to be able to slice and dice all of the great stories uh, that you've shared with us and promoted on Drupal.org. Um, the new format looks, oh, this is looking real blurry. Um, so sorry about that. Um, something's going on with the feed, but the new format uh, includes a, a, a nice cover image, some good content areas, and just a, a more, I would say, um, narrative focus to uh, the case studies. They're less kind of fundamentally technical in nature and a much better tool for just presenting the story of a powerful uh, Drupal case study. Uh, furthermore, they also have a print format now so that if you ever need sort of the PDF version of a case study, you can get that from your Drupal.org submitted version. Um, additionally, we've been making some improvements to documentation. Um, so there's a, a just a small feature that's been, uh, that's a nice quality of life feature. There's now an automatically generated uh, table of contents on any documentation page on Drupal.org. Several people helped out. Um, who I've listed in the sidebar here. Um, but basically any anchor link in documentation becomes part of this table of contents, which should make it easier for folks who are just looking for help uh, to get started with Drupal. Um, we also, uh, again, in collaboration with some community members, um, deployed some work to help improve international collaboration. So you've probably seen, if you're anywhere on Drupal.org issue queues or the comment stream, that there are now um, little indicators of what language some contributors might speak or what country they're in, um, or even the uh, pronouns they use, different things like that, so that we can uh, just create a little bit more cultural context so that uh, people collaborating together can understand when there might be a language barrier at play or anything like that. And also just to recognize how international our community really is. Um, I want to call out uh, Justifish in particular as a user who really did uh, a lot of work to make this happen um, along with our team. Uh, there's also been some Drupal CI improvements over the course of the last quarter. Um, as you know, Drupal CI is the testing system which makes sure that there are no regressions in new releases of Drupal and that allow us to validate new features or support for new environments and things like that. Um, so it certainly is on the highly technical side, but I think it's one of the most critical services that we provide to the community. Um, in particular, the testing environment now supports testing against 7.3 uh, 
uh, stable uh, of PHP, also the 7.4 beta of PHP, and PostgreSQL 9.5 are now all supported for testing. Um, so we can make sure to, that these will all be Drupal compatible. Um, we've actually already discovered some um, uh, very minor bugs as a result of adding beta testing for some of these features and been able to contribute fixes upstream that will improve it for all of these users, not just the Drupal community. Um, finally, as you know, the automatic update initiative has been underway for a while. The Drupal Association has been working together with the European Commission on this initiative to try and provide an automatic update feature in Drupal. Um, uh, as mentioned in the last update, there's some basic work in place already that um, you can sort of demo if you went and looked at the project in terms of readiness checks that figure out if a site will actually cleanly apply automatic updates and things like that. But in addition to that, we've been recently, um, in fact, at Midwest Drupal Summit, uh, working with several community members who helped produce uh, the package signing system that we're going to use so that we can sign and verify the packages being delivered by Drupal.org to Drupal sites, make sure that they're, they, in fact, the correct uh, packages, that it's secure, um, and make sure that we have uh, a really robust layer of security around the automatic update system. Um, so there's some cool work there. Um, there's a project called PHP Signify that you can find um, that's actually on the Drupal Association GitHub because it's not a Drupal specific project. It can work for anybody in PHP. Um, finally, we're continuing our work for further integrations and enhancing our tool set with GitLab. As you know, GitLab is now the back end of all of the Drupal.org code collaboration. Um, the next set of features uh, is the forking and merge request feature. So we actually, again, uh, sort of demoed that in a development state at Midwest Drupal Summit, um, got some feedback on the permissions and the user experience for integrating that into the Drupal.org issue queues. So um, there should be more on that coming pretty soon. So keep an eye out and hopefully we'll have some awesome new collaboration features. Um, so thank you on behalf of the engineering team for your support. And I want to hand it back uh, to Carrie, I think, to wrap us up. Yeah, um, thanks again for your support. Just a reminder um, of how you can stay informed. Um, we will be sending a monthly email update to all of our supporters. You can follow us at Drupal Asos on Twitter. You can reach out directly to your account managers, myself or Delana Lang. We also did create a supporting partner Slack channel, um, not necessarily to stay informed about DA news, but as a way to connect with each other um, and just to, you know, make sure you're collaborating and having kind of a safe space to stay connected with other supporters. Um, if you don't know how to join um, that Slack channel, please reach out and let us know. Um, again, just thanks to Tim and uh, welcome Heather to your first supporter webcast. It's really great to have you here. Um, we want to take this opportunity to thank all of our supporters for everything that they, they do for the association and the project. We're really excited to continue working with you to create really compelling benefits for your organization that also support the project and the in the community and we couldn't do any of this without you. Um, so right now I think we'll just open it up to see if there are any questions from the group. Yeah, so I'm, I've been monitoring the chat and the Q&A section. It doesn't look like there's anything in there, but we'll give it another minute or two just in case anybody has a follow-up question they'd like to ask. Um, but in the meantime, yes, thank you very much for attending today. It's great to have you here, and we will be sending out the recording um, at the end uh, once it has processed and we've got it uploaded. Let's see. I think we'll give it another 60 seconds and then we'll call it <laughs> if there are no questions. Thanks very much, everyone. Thank you to all. I'm really excited to be here and uh, look forward to hopefully meeting all of you in person at one of our upcoming events. All right. All right. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Thanks. I guess we'll call it there. No yeah, questions. It was so clear. Yeah. We appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you to the DA team and thank you to our Drupal community. And we look forward to connecting with you soon. Thanks. See you all at DrupalCon. Bye bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. <laughs>